just paint it and then go down the road and, and, and be done with it and then paint the back side, the front side and wow, we're done. But the situation is, is we are doing a concourse style restoration to this paint job. Now this guy brought these parts over. Um, he had them in another shop. The shop didn't do them or whatever the fuck happened. I don't know. He brings them over to me. I've been working on them off and on for about three or four months. Today's the day that we're going to paint them. He specifically said he wants it looking like high gloss mirror finish inside. Now, now there's a lot of you guys out there that want that finish as well. But the situation is, is getting that high gloss finish that you want and doing it properly. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. course style restoration like you see right here you can see that I have everything hanging up and it's been meticulously hand sanded inside and out you can tell right there because we went through the primer on that and uh, that will get a nice thick coat of epoxy primer but the situation is it, it's a extreme job to do uh, concourse restoration and what concourse restoration is is basically better than factory new there's a lot of people out there that want that done and don't realize the magnitude of restoration that it takes to do this. Uh, like I said, I've had these parts here several months and been working on them off and on. And let me tell you what, it is not an overnight, in and out, quickie fucking paint job. Like for instance, our muscle car makeover that we got right here. Now this is not a quickie, in and out paint job. But this is a totally different style paint job that we're doing to this than to the pieces that you saw hanging up in there. This car here did not get stripped down to bare metal, did not have all the bodywork redone on it. Uh, panels will be removed, but the situation is we are not going to paint the inside of the panels and, and make them just like the outside of the panels. So this style of restoration here is basically what you would usually do to a car to make it show car ready or you know to your liking. To go to this magnitude is another level of stress factor and, and meticulous work that is basically in my opinion unnecessary. 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 Because first of all you waste a lot of fucking material when you do a job like this. It takes ten times longer to do it this way. The stuff that you're painting inside and out will never be seen on the inside and it's just a waste of time, waste of money and waste of energy making a car to this magnitude uh, that you think is better than the factory. But if that's what the customer wants then that's what the customer will get. Uh, would I take it to this magnitude? No. All right. If I was going to restore a car and uh, restore it to my likings, I would do it like we're doing on our muscle car makeover. Now, one thing about this, uh, 
The reason we didn't strip this down to bare metal, and that's the only other step that we would have taken on this is stripping it down to bare metal, is because the paint that was on it was in very good shape and it was a solid, solid paint job and did not need stripped. Now here's a job right here. This is a 1969 Mustang Mach 1. This is basically your off-frame restoration due to the fact that the Mustangs really don't have a frame and it's a unibody. The only thing that I have not done to this car is take the rear end out of it. Everything else has been taken out and it is being restored just like if it was on a rotisserie. We will remove the doors once the body work's done. You can see the front end is already taken off and the deck lid will be removed as well. Speaking of deck lid, you can see that this has extreme rust that is protruding from the edge of it. That's going to take minute uh, repairs to fix that because we do not want to purchase any aftermarket parts necessary to finish this job. Everything that we need, we want to use original parts. That's another style of what you can classify as concourse restoration. Uh, the concourse restoration world does not rely on aftermarket parts. Instead, the concourse world would go out and buy factory OEM fenders. Uh, they would buy approximately maybe two fenders to make one, like we had to do with this fender right here. Or they might possibly buy two used doors and then make one. If we look at this fender right here, you can see that it's got this bolt hole rusted out. Um, the owner brought me another fender. He went out and purchased another fender, uh, used but original, and said, here's another fender to go ahead and cut that out so you can replace it just like factory original. I told him that I did not want to do that, that since that's the only rust in this fender, I'll go ahead and make my own and drill my own hole out. And then, of course, if we look at the inside of the fender, you can see that it has been soda blasted to remove all of the surface rust and all the contamination and everything that needs to be removed. Also, pay close attention down here. You can see a line right there. Uh, the bottom of this fender has been replaced. So the concourse world does not rely on aftermarket parts to restore their car. The concourse restoration world relies on OEM and OS parts to do the job and to spend that big mighty dollar bill that it takes to do it the right way that they want that says it's better than factory new. So what we're painting today is we are painting our fender skirts right here. These are full fender skirts, lowrider style. Uh, the owner claims that these were off of a Mercury at one time. I claim that those are aftermarket fender skirts. They're probably about five or six years old. Very, very thin sheet metal. And uh, you could have probably bought those for $350, $400 a set complete versus him spending $1,200 for those because some guy said that they're off a 1951 Mercury. Also, there was extensive bodywork done to these. If you look at the ripples on the back side, you can see where the dents were, and also on this side right here. And then, of course, up and around the edges of each one, uh, we had to hammer and dolly those edges out and make them to original factory new, just like he wants. And then right here, these are our fender extensions on our front fenders that wrap around to hook in with our filler panel. This is our bumper filler panel, so we're going to paint all this stuff inside and out that's hanging up. And I have taken to the extreme, these have been sanded, hand block sanded, uh, down to 320. They have all been primed twice on the outside. 
and then once on the inside. All these pieces have been soda slash sandblasted, whichever uh, was proper to do so. And they will be painted inside and out and have a mirror finish inside and out. And as we walk up to these pieces right here, this is a good example of why the fuck would you want to do this. Um, these pieces right here are on the lower part of the fenders and they roll around into this piece right here. So you can kind of visualize these pieces as they're tied together. It wraps around the whole front end under the bumper. And what you're looking at, you're looking at the back side of them. All right, this is the back side of your bumper filler panel. And then these are the back sides of your fender extensions that go on the front fenders. Why would you want to paint those to a mere finish when no one in the world is ever going to see them? Why? It doesn't make sense to me. I would not go to that extreme. And to sand these two pieces right here, well, we'll go ahead and say these three pieces on the inside right here. And then, of course, these pieces, that's approximately a four and a half, five hour job sanding them down to 180 grit dry. To hand block these two pieces right here, inside and out, inside being with 180, and then outside being with 320 is approximately a two and a half to three day job to properly do it right to make sure that it has that mere finish that we're looking for. And then of course these were sanded uh, the same 320 on the outside. So we got approximately a week and a half in just block sanding right here. The hood that you're looking at back there, the hood that you're looking at, that was sanded, dry sanded down to 180 by hand and that took approximately a full day just to get that ready for paint. And as you see, we went ahead and put some bolts inside the threaded inserts on the hood for the hinges and also for the hood latch itself. What that will do will keep those threads clean and not build them up with paint and clear coat. That's right, I said the magic word, clear coat. The owner of this car wants everything done in base coat, clear coat. He wants it done with three full wet coats of paint and three full wet coats of clear coat on everything. So to do this type of a restoration is very, very time consuming and very, very expensive. Um, what you were seeing me do right here, the bottom, the top of this hood is not painted. The top of the hood isn't painted. And what I'm doing is I'm taping off around the edges. I'm finding an edge that I'll be able to tape off uh, when I reverse tape it. And what I'm doing here is taping off the back side, I'm sorry, the front side of the hood because I don't want to get overspray from the three coats of paint, three coats of clear, onto the primer, because what that will do, that will give me more work, I'll have to reprime, I'll have to block sand three times harder if I get overspray on all these edges. So, there, here's another material uh, drawback on doing this type of job, is that it takes three times as much material to do a paint job like this, in reality to just restoring your car like our muscle car makeover job that we're doing in the other bay. And then once I put my tape on it, what I'll do is I'll come back with my paper machine right here and I'll wrap that with paper and tuck it up under. These are very, very time consuming jobs when it comes to a restoration like this. And is it worth the money? I don't believe it is. Not to the owner and not to the shop owner. Not to the car owner, not to the shop owner, not to anybody involved except these people right here. When I show you this tape, I'm talking about the suppliers that sell the paint supplies. They are the only one that's coming out on top of doing a restoration like this. This guy, and he's an example, will have so much money in his fucking car from this type of restoration that if he ever goes to sell it, and I will tell you now, sooner or later that car will be sold, he will never 
get any money that is close to what he has invested in this car. Now it is a 1962 door hardtop Impala, but that's not the most popular Impala. If you are going to register your brain to say, I want a concourse restoration, it must be done to a vehicle that is worth money. Uh, like the 64 Impala SS, for instance. All right, that is worth a lot more money than the 1960 two-door hardtop Impala. Now, don't get me wrong, this car is worth a lot of money, but the situation is not as much as the 64 Impala that's been concourse restoration restored. Now, another thing about concourse restoration, quote unquote, is that the only way the car is really, really worth the value that you put in it is if you bring it back to OEM manufacturer NOS specs. That means all the interior has got to be factory spec original. The carpet has to be factory spec original. The motor and transmission, the rear end, the front suspension, the whole nine yards, it has to be a factory spec original car to bring the type of money that you, Mr. Concourse fuck off guy out there, is investing in your car. When you modify these concourse restorations and you put the uh, lead sled fucking uh, fender skirts on it and the 20 inch wheels and the hopped up 454 big block and the overdrive transmission and the, the 373 geared rear end and the upper and lower tubular control arm suspensions and all this shit, all you're doing, Mr. Concourse cocksucker, is wasting your fucking money because you will never get the money out of it that you put in. Believe me, I know. I restored a 1962 Galaxy. It was a two-door post. I spent $33,000 doing it. I converted it all over to Y2K, which means I put the fuel injection drivetrain in it. I changed all the gears in the rear end. Uh, Mustang 2 front suspension, fat man subframe, custom fucking leather interior, the whole fucking nine yards, two-tone paint, blah, 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 this, that, and the other, dropped it three inches, and guess what? I ended up selling it for $21,000, and that was a year and a half later. And the only way the guy would buy it is if I delivered it to California for free! <laughs>
to expect of what really goes on behind the scenes at Barrett Jackson because I've been there many, many, many times. I used to go there every fucking year and sell car furniture. And everybody that goes to that fucking car show wants to shoot you down on all your prices because they think that the work that you do isn't worth what you're selling it for. I used to sell car desks, couches, credenzas, fold-up beds. Yes, that's right. I would make a fold-out bed from a car couch. I used to make tables and lamps and all kinds of fucking crazy shit. Tool benches, work benches. Just whatever the fuck I can think of to make out of the creation of an old, classic, rotted out, rusted car, I made it and sold it. I quit going to Barrett Jackson because I was tired of the fucking headaches of everybody trying to take you for a fucking in the ass and all the fucking bullshit that went on behind the scenes that you, Mr. Concourse fucking guy, doesn't see. So, what is the conclusion of my friend Pete's story of concourse restorations. Don't fucking do it. Save your fucking money, get on the internet, and find a car that you like and buy it. Let somebody else take the fucking in the ass, whining and crying and tell you how much money they put in it and how much money they're losing, and you come out the fucking winner. And all you gotta do is pay the guy for the car and drive the bitch home or have it towed to your fucking house and guess what? You saved yourself $50,000 in the process. Or if you happen to be one of the lucky dogs out in the world that just happens to have a big block 396 SS Chevelle Supersport or uh, a compatible car to this nature, restore it like I'm doing on this. You can see all these videos on DIY Auto School. That's YouTube DIY Auto School called Muscle Car Restoration, How to Restore Your Car or How to Paint Your Car at Home, whatever the fuck the title is on it. And that's where my friend Pete takes you through every fucking step of how to really restore a car and save fucking money. So don't be like this guy, or better yet, possibly this guy. This is another story and another creation right here. This is uh, the kit car world. This is the kit car manufacturer world of fiberglass kit cars right here. And what you're looking at is another pile of fucking money, uh, a money pit in itself that says, I got more money than brains, and I'm going to buy one of these cars and build it. And uh, guess what? I'm going to be like every other fucking guy out there that's got theirs for sale and uh, lose my ass. This is Pete over at Southwest Rod and Custom, and I'm just trying to be honest with you. I am not trying to be a fake hobo jobo fucking cocksucker and drag you into my shop and advertise for my shop that says you need me to restore your car because you don't. What you do need is a fucking brain on your head, a small toolbox in your garage, and the attitude that says, I can do it myself, fuck all them other cocksuckers, and get her done. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, doing the concourse restoration for the customer, and losing my ass as well. Uh, I've been working on this shit all morning, it's 11.45 right now, uh, and all I've been doing is tinker toying around, getting it in the paint booth, making sure that it's ready to paint, and hopefully, before tonight, around 9 o'clock, I'll have it done painted and back in tomorrow morning to paint the back side of the hood and hopefully a fender. We'll see you later and uh, good luck with that concourse restoration.